Hello and welcome back to the Crafty Corner. I'm Jenna and I'm here to tell you about the new challenge over at the Funky Junkie Inspiration Avenue Challenge Blog. This week we are going to be looking at the theme Frozen Winter. So I am pulling out all of my distress mediums that remind me of ice and snow. And we're also going to be featuring the new die set Abstract Shapes. So this is going to be broken down into three parts this week. First, we're going to be exploring our frozen mediums and building a few elements for an art journal layout. Then we're going to be diving into abstract elements and we're going to be building a wolf. After, we will assemble a complete journal spread from start to finish. If you'd like to see which supplies I'm going to be using here for part one, go ahead and pause here. All right, let's head over to the Crafty Corner. Today we're working to the theme of Frozen Winter. So to fit with that theme, I'm going to be looking at some frosty cold frozen mediums. We've got crackle paste translucent, crackle paste icicle, distress paint crackle, and grit paste snowfall. So we're going to be looking at four frozen mediums and as a bonus I'm also going to be throwing in some distress glitter clear rock candy. So to start with so we can best see these mediums at their advantage I am going to be creating a quick tag using some distress spray stains and oxide. To start with I am taking a regular size standard tag and we're going to spritz that with some water from the distress sprayer. Few quick spritz and now let's go ahead and add some color. Before we add too much color I am going to put down a small scrap of paper towel to catch some of the liquid. I love using the splat lat box. I love using the splat box but it takes up just a bit of space and I don't want the camera to bump off of that today. So let's go ahead and we're going to start with a dash of salvage patina. Next, let's go in with some chip sapphire, just a little bit, oh, there, and a bit of broken china. Good. Now I'm just going to let this blend out with some more water. I'm just going to spray the tag. We're going to pick up the tag in order to get the ink to move, and then we will dry it off. Okay. I like the look of that. So well, let me just go ahead and put this on fast forward while we give this a quick dry. Okay, now we have a tag that we can work off of. That is pretty good. I am liking the splatters and the way the Distress Oxide mixed in with our Distress spray stains. So we're going to give the Medium Act a quick little clean. I'm just going to spritz it with water and give it a quick wipe. Okay, now we're going to dive into the differences between the four different medias that we have here. So. I'm going to be using this kind of as a swatch card, but I'm not going to line everything up completely neatly like a swatch card. I want this to turn into more of a little mixed media tag that I can die cut up at a later date. So first, let's go ahead and spread some of the Distress Crackle Paste Icicle. I'm going to spread that near the bottom, let's see how that turns out. Now this stuff is pretty neat because it has little bits of glittery mica in it. It's hard to catch the shimmer in this light, but it is there. So let's go ahead and spread that out. I'm going to pick the tag up and just kind of scoop that on here. I'm not really trying to go for a specific shape. I just want to get a corner of this coated with icicle. Okay. That should be good. Now I'm layering this on fairly thick because I do want there to be some fairly prominent cracks when this dries. 
All right, so we'll just wipe this off and we will get our next medium. Next, I'm going to be putting a little bit of Snowfall Grit Paste down in the other corner. This one is pretty different from the other two. This doesn't crackle. This leaves a icy, snowy look wherever it's put down. So take that and we'll just spread that right here. Totally different consistency and this is going to dry semi-transparent. Okay, I'll just scrape that on. And we'll just have that overlap just a little bit. And I'll put the extra back into the jar. Good. Now, let's go ahead and add some of the crackle paste translucent. This should give us a fairly prominent crackle. Now, this one and the crackle paint do similar things but the look is different and the viscosity, as you will notice in a moment, is also very different. For the translucent crackle paste, we have this creamy consistency that is kind of, it's kind of like mayonnaise. It's thick enough to stay put on the palette knife, but it's still smooth enough that it is easily spread. So we're going to take some of that and we're just going to add that along here. Again, I'm putting this on about the consistency of butter that you might on toast since we do want to get a nice crackle effect. Okay. Not bad. Now let's go ahead and get a bit of the crackle paint. So the crackle paint is really different in look and feel. It looks kind of like school glue and it's very, very liquidy. This I'd say is more the consistency of warm honey. As you can see, it drips very easily back into the jar and this will give us a clear, very prominent crackle when dry. So let's go ahead and put a bit of this onto the tag and we'll do a comparison once our elements are dry on the tag. So we're just going to put that down. I'm going to just smear this on the corner and just drag it, drag it down. And then tap that off. Make sure that I have a good layer built up. All right. So we're going to go ahead and let this tag dry and we'll be back and see how these different elements have worked. And for a small bonus, we're going to also add a dash of Distress Clear Rock Candy down in the corner right here. Just, just a little bit. Okay, let's set this aside and let it dry. Okay, let's take a look at how our tag turned out. So on here, we used four different mediums plus a little bit of Distress Rock Candy Clear Glitter. So over here we have Icicle. That, as you can see, gives a very icy finish. There's a little bit of sparkle on there, very faint shimmer from a bit of, looks like mica powder. Then over here we have Snowfall. This is pretty crunchy. It has a nice rough texture and it gives the look of frozen snow. Then over here, this is where we added some of the translucent crackle paste. It has a very nice crackle on it. The crackle isn't overly dramatic like the opaque crackle paste. It's kind of hairline crackles, um, kind of like broken glass. And then over here we have the Distress Crackle Paint. As you might notice, this is very, very shiny and it looks pretty amazing. So those are our four different types of icy winter mediums. Now, there's more that we can do with this. We can also highlight some of these crackles with a bit of Distress Crayon. So for the Distress Crayon, I'm going to be bringing in four different colors. We're going to be using a bit of speckled egg, some hickory smoke, tumble glass, and picket fence. So what I'm going to do is smush a bit of the Distress Crayon into each of the mediums. And I'm going to be matching each of these 
up with a different section on here. Okay, I think we'll do something like this. So first, let's go ahead and smoosh some of the distressed picket fence into the corner of the area that has the distressed crackle paint. So I'm just gonna smoosh that on here, then just my finger, I'm going to push that into the cracks. As you can see, the distress crayon really highlights all of those wonderful little crackly bits. That is pretty neat. All right, well, let's try the one down here. We're going to go in with a little bit of speckled egg. I'm just gonna scribble that over the top again. Smush that in and that gives us a little bit more of an icy look. I like that. Hmm. Okay, I don't think we're gonna get much result down here with the snowfall grip paste, but why not give ourselves a couple of little accents over here. So, studying that. It doesn't really add anything to the snowfall, but it does allow us to give a little bit of shadow to our texture. All right, now in the top corner over here, this is where we have the translucent crackle paste, and we're going to smoosh in a little bit of tumble glass. So again, I'm just going to put this down in the corner and smoosh that in with my finger. As you can see, the crackles here pick up the distress crayon and just highlight the areas. Okay, so that was our little play with different mediums that give us a wonderful frozen look. So I'm going to kind of finish off this tag. I can't help it. The tag is fun, but let's go ahead and alter a piece of seam binding. And we're going to do that with a dash of winter frost. Another wonderful addition to all things frozen. So we'll just go ahead, give this a shake. We've got some sediment in the bottom of this that needs to get mixed in. So we'll give it a shaky shake. You can see the mica has mixed with the rest of this. This is one of the Tim Holtz Distress Mica Spray Stains from the last seasonal release. So next we're just going to take some water with our Distress Sprayer and we'll crinkle up the seam binding. And then we'll give it a good spritz with the mica spray stain. Perfect. Then I'll just wipe that around, make sure that's all good. And I'm going to just dry this off with the Ranger Heat Tool. Let's go ahead and put that on fast forward. Okay, and here is our altered seam binding. A quick and easy technique to add a bit of color to an otherwise plain adornment. And Let's go ahead and just stick that onto our tag. I am thinking that I might want to include the tag somewhere in our journal make in part three, but for now, it gives this a bit of a more finished look. Okay, let's go ahead and set this aside. Now we're going to be looking at altering some different elements for the journal make. And I'm going to be pulling in a few of the mediums that we just talked about. We are going to be using some of these die cuts. This is from an older die set by the name of Labels. So here we've taken two of the shield pieces and we're going to be turning this into a little emblem. This is going to be kind of a little nod to the Night's Watch. And I've also got this really neat piece that I created with a seal and some wax. And this is just a touch of distress paint over the top in the color of brushed pewter. So, set that down. Now, I'm gonna to wanna to grunge these up just a little bit. So, we're going to be pulling in some walnut stain. We've got dome foam on our mini blender, and we're just gonna add just a bit of ink around the edge of the shield. Now, the shield was die cut from some Tim Holtz packaging, so it's already got a pretty awesome distressed look, but I wanted to darken up the edges just a little bit more. All right, that is good. Now I'm going to pop this up using a bit of foam square. I've got some of these, and we'll take one of the larger pieces. These are some of the black 3D foam squares from Simon Says. So I'll just place those on the side, and 
We're going to stick that on the back of the black shield. Now for the black shield, I want to add a little bit of shading around the edges. And for that, I'm going to be bringing in some Frosted Juniper Distress Crayon. Okay, so I'm just going to flick that on there and then I will smudge it with my fingers. I love using foam squares because it adds just a little bit more dimension to the pieces that you're working on. All right. There, I think I'm happy with that. Cap the crayon and add this. Okay, so we're just nesting that shield right in here. Mm, I don't know, some of the ink kind of wore off. Let's do a second little layering of that. Okay, good. And the last thing I'm going to do is stick this wax seal on here. And to do that, we're going to be using a dash of collage medium. Just spread that on here. Okay, that's good. And we'll just flip this over and stick this down. Ooh, not bad. That will make a good journaling element. Okay, so we're just gonna set that aside. We'll let it dry and move on to the next element. For our next element, we are going to be creating our sentiment. Again, I have a couple of pieces die cut from this die set, labels, and this time we're using the large piece and one of the more medium sized ones. And this is going to be a landing spot for our sentiment. So I'd like to stamp out the sentiment first. I have an older stamp set that I'm pulling in today. Oh boy, this one is from Just Thoughts CMS 078. This one is pretty old, but they're all still good ones. Now the sentiment that we're going to be borrowing from this set is enjoy the journey. And for stamping, of course, we're going to be using some Distress Block Archival Soot Ink. Just going to stamp that down on here, make sure we have a good coating. That looks good. Turn this over and stamp. For stamping, I'm using a acrylic block. And this one has some little wavy edges. I like that. It's good for gripping. Okay, stamped sentiment. Good. Oh, I like how we've got a little bit of a backwards E in there. That's fun. Okay, and again, I do want to add a little bit more shadow to these pieces. So again, we're going to be going in with some walnut stain and inking up the edges. Again, just going around with the dome foam, just darkening up the edges. It's pretty good. And now for this one, and the pieces are also cut from more Tim Holtz packaging. I love saving those packaging pieces and turning them into sentiments and other elements for creating. All right, yeah, I think we'll pop that up as well with a little bit more foam. I think two foam pieces will be plenty for this. So just take that and that, peel off the backing and stick this down. Now, I've got to be a little careful. The archival ink hasn't quite dried, but I'll just set that aside and let it finish drying. And there is our sentiment for our journal entry. But you know what? Looking at that, I want to add an icy element to this. The question is, which icy element should we use? I am leaning towards snowfall grit paste. It's probably going to pick up a little bit of the distress ink, but I think I'm okay with that. If there's a little edge of slightly grungy snow, that that's going to be okay. So let's take that. I'm going to put my hand here so I'm not getting any of the archival ink on myself. Yeah, it's going to pick up some of the distress ink. Not a big deal. I just I want the texture on here. The texture is cool. Okay, I'm just spread it like that. Okay. I think that will do nicely. Oh, what the heck. Just a little bit more down here. I don't want to overdo this, but at the same time, a little bit of ice and snow. 
That can only be a good thing. All right, so we'll let this dry and we'll check back on this later and see how it turns out. For the next journal element, we are also going to be altering some collage paper. So I have some of the plain collage paper and I'm going to be pulling in a few Distress Archival inks in winter colors. We're going to be using Mermaid Lagoon, Salvage Patina, and Prize Ribbon. And to go with those, we're going to be pulling in another old stamp set. This is Fabulous Flourishes, CMS 070. So I love these older flourishes. They're really pretty and it's going to help give our background a little bit more movement. So let's go ahead and add this to a larger stamping block and start adding some flourishes to our background. Okay, so I'm going to start with the big flourish and I'm going to alternate between stamping in light and dark colors and hopefully this is going to give us some interesting results. Okay. As you can see, this is a well-loved stamp, one that I have frequently used. I think I will start with the darker ink and see how the lighter ink blends in once I get to that. So again, we're just going to tap this down. Oh, wait a minute. I can do a gradient. Why didn't I think of that sooner? Since these are nice and small and I'm not using full-size ink pads, why not? We can definitely do a gradient. I can have these overlap and hmm, we'll see what we get. This could be interesting. Okay, and now for some salvage patina. Oh, okay. This is going to be neat and that's going to give us a icy flourish. Okay, let's see how that stamps. I think I'll start like that. Press that down, apply good firm pressure all over the stamp. I want to see how all of the colors play together. Ooh, that is pretty neat. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side, but we're going to reverse it like that. So again, we will quickly ink up our stamp and just try to make sure that our colors are overlapping so that we get that really cool gradient going. Okay, I'm thinking after I get this stamped, then I'm going to pull the smaller stamp in and try to do a little bit of crisscross and see how they meld together. Then I will put my second piece of collage paper on fast forward while we ink up that one as well. Okay, so turning this and putting that down. Yes, I've got the dark side up, light side down. Good. And push. All right. Mm, definitely liking this, so I think I'll just do a strip in the middle with this one. All right, let's switch out our stamps. Do that quickly. Take that, put that here. Okay, a bit of ink. Now for the Mermaid Lagoon. Quickly add that. Oh, that shows up really well in here. Neat. And last but not least, the salvage patina. Okay, and yeah, I think I'll just stamp it out like this. Ooh, okay, neat. I think I'll try a slightly different pattern with the other stamping, but let's go ahead and put that on fast forward. For our next alteration, we are going to be pulling in some more of the translucent crackle paint. Absolutely love the stuff. The shattered glass look is very cool. All right, so opening that up, I am going to be wanting a silvery moon in my journal scene. So I die cut a circle from some of the Ideology Tim Holtz craft stock, and we're just going to paint that with the Distress crackle paint. Now. I can't quite remember if this is going to stick well on the slick surface, so I am going to lightly scratch this up just in case. While I'm waiting for 
my sanding just to come in, I'm just going to use a nail file and I'm being very careful not to scratch up the media mat. That would not be good. We're just going to stay on the craft paper. I'm hoping that by scratching this a little bit, it's going to give us some grip and the paint is going to stick. So we're just going to take a palette knife, take a scoop and spread this on here. I think for the most part, I'm just going to cover the whole moon and see what sort of crackly goodness we can get from this. Let's get that off the ground. Good. If we've got a few holes in here. I don't think it's going to be the end of the world, but I want to get as good coverage as possible. So looks like we need just a little bit more. Okay. I'll just smear that on here. Again, this stuff spreads kind of like honey. It's very drippy. It moves quite a bit. It doesn't have the same staying powder, like a texture like butter would, but it's interesting. And I suspect that's probably what allows it to give such a fluid crackly look when it's dry. Okay. So we are going to set this aside and let this dry. Drying time on the crackle paint could easily take between 20 minutes to 40 minutes. It all depends on where you are in the world and what the humidity levels are. Since we're here in lower Quebec, well, things can be a little bit humid. So I will give this plenty of time to dry and we will check back later and continue this alteration. So we're going to be taking a look at the moon that we tried to put some distress crackle paint on. And we did sand this, but it didn't really stick to well. You know what? That's okay. It was a slick surface, so the chances of the paint sticking weren't that great to begin with. But I was hoping that maybe the sanding might add a little bit more area for this to grip on. We got some texture on here, but it's really not what I was going for. And the thing is, as soon as we start moving this, we've got paint coming off. So to fix that, we're just going to flip this over after I clear the deck. And we're going to add a dash of distressed paint and then using the craft side of that craft stock, we're then going to add the crackle paint over the top. So I'm going to just add a dollop of some brushed pewter. We're going to quickly just brush that on. It doesn't need a very thick layer, but I really want a silvery moon in my background. So I'm just going to brush that on and this fits perfectly with our frozen winter theme. Okay, turning and we'll just get that other side. Good. So I'm just going to quickly heat this with the heat tool and that will quickly dry off our paint and then we will be able to add the distress crackle paint over the top. Now for some distress crackle paint. So we'll just take this, take a bit with the brush quickly brush that on and again we'll have to set this aside and wait at least 20 to 30 minutes for it to dry and then we will see what sort of results that we've got with this. Okay so applying a fairly reasonable layer just spreading kind of about the same thickness that you'd want butter on bread. Okay there's the crackle paint so we'll just go ahead and set this aside and we'll be back in just a little bit. All right, let's bring back our moon and see how it has transformed. Okay, much, much better. We've got some great crackle going on here, and this is the painted side that we did on the craft stock. The other side, we found out that crackle paint does not stick so well to slick surfaces, even when they're sanded. But totally okay, we now have a beautiful silver moon, but we need to help that crackle pop just a little bit more. So. I'm going to take the camera down just a bit and we're going to take some distressed picket fence and scribble that over the top and bring out those crackles. Okay, just going to scribble that on and then smoosh that down just using some fingers. Oh, now we're starting to get that texture that I was after. Okay, so just add a bit more here, smoosh that in. Mm. 
I am loving the crackle on this. And that just made so much more noticeable when we add the Distress Crayon. Okay, so I do want to bring a bit of the moon shine back. So what I'm going to do is wipe a bit of this off using some paper towel. And I'll just spritz that with a bit of water. And then we should have a crackly and fairly luminescent moon. Okay, right. there we go. Oh, there we go. I am quite happy with this. Okay, and to do a quick recap on our frozen elements, we have created some collage paper that we stamped on with icy cold colors. Got that. We have our crackly moon. We also altered our sentiment with a bit of the Distress Texture Paste Snowfall, so you can see the icy chunks down here. And we also have our little nod to the Night's Watch with this fun seal. And we painted the seal with a little bit of Distress Paint Brushed Pewter. So with our frozen elements, we are going to build a journal scene. Thank you so much for joining me here today at the Crafty Corner for part one of Frozen Winter. We hope that you too will join the creative fun and leave a hashtag featuring the funky junkie so we can check out all of your creative frozen makes. This challenge is open from January 25th through February 7th. And until the next crafting video in part two, happy crafting.